Masechet Baba Kama, Daf Mem Dalet. Vechen Beben O Bebat. The Mishnah all the way back on Daf Mem Aleph taught that the laws of Shortam and Shor Moad that kill someone, uh, where the ox is, uh, is killed, and if it's Moad, then you have to pay Kofir. Um, all those laws regarding an ox that kills a person. Um, apply not only if it kills an adult, but also if it kills a boy or a girl, meaning a minor. Okay, Tenora Bana. Now we call a Braita that expands on this. O ben yigach o bat yigach. Lechayeva laketanim ke gedolim. So a Braita goes straight to the source because these words are directly from the Pesukim. In the context of Shor Mu'ad, that kills someone, right? Says the Shor Yisakel, the owner has to pay kofer. And then it says, O ben yigach, O bat yigach, kamishpat azeh, ya'ase lo. And if it, even if it kills a son or a daughter, meaning a child, still all the same laws apply. And the question is, why do we need this, right? To tell me that the ox is, is liable and the owner is liable uh, in kofed if it kills a boy or a girl, whether it's a minor or an adult. Um, so that's what's coming to teach us. But now the Vedaita asks, couldn't I figure this out logically? First, we argue from a memasinu. This is not a kavachomer. Kavachomer is going to come up in a second. This is just an analogy from similar cases. And since we know that um, in the case when a human kills another human, um, uh, one is liable, we're comparing human killing another human to an, an animal killing a human. Just like when a human kills a human, one is liable if one kills a child, right? This, one is a murderer, it doesn't matter whether, vic- whether the victim is an adult or a child. Uh, so, just like we don't make any distinction there between, uh, between children and adults, so also it makes sense that when we're talking about an ox killing a person, that we would make no difference whether the victim is a child or an adult. So that's just from analogy. But if you want something even stronger, ve'od kavachomer hu uma adam ba adam shelo asabo ketanim kigdolim chayev ba ala ketanim kigdolim. Now the kavachomer is focusing on not the victim being a child, but rather the perpetrator being a child. Um, it, when one human kills another human, where we do not equate a child with an adult, um, be uh, because we um, the one is not liable regarding children as one is regarding adults. A child that kills is not liable; they're not responsible for their actions. Only an adult is responsible. So shor be'adam she'asabo ketanim kigdolim. So transfer that to an ox. Where if an ox kills a person, we do equate. Um, young ox to an older ox. doesn't matter how old the ox is. Even if it's just uh, a, a few months old, it's already considered an ox. There's no bar mitzvah for an ox. And so an ox is liable whether it is young or old. So we see that the laws of an ox are more stringent than the laws of a man that kills. And so, if when uh, when um, an ox kills, there's no difference where, when uh, the ox for itself, by itself, where the, even if it's a child ox, is still liable, so all the more so, and that the ox will be more liable where, than an adult that kills uh, another human. And uh, so, just like an adult that kills, doesn't matter whether it's a child or an adult, one is liable, so to an ox where there's more liability, uh, an ox certainly will be liable, not only for adults, but also for killing a child. So the point of all this is a question, why do I need a pasuk to tell me that an ox that gores a child is liable? Um, couldn't I figure this out from a kal and the memasinu? And the answer is lo ima marta ba'adam ba'adam shekent chayav barba devarim toma b'shor sheno chayav barba devarim tamod lomar o ben yigach o bat yigach lechayav ala ketanim kegedolim. No, not necessarily so, because when a human kills another human, one is or, or harms another human, one is liable to pay for the other four items, not only for um, for damage, but also for all the other four costs of pain, humiliation, medical costs, and loss of livelihood, in addition to damage. So, when and uh, when a person damages another person, 
um, when it's more liable um, than when a short does, because a short that damages a person, when the owner only has to pay for the damages, not for the other ones. So I might think that, well, maybe when a human kills a human, that is more liable, and that's why a human that commits murder to a child will be liable, but maybe an animal that kills a child won't be liable, because right here is an example where an animal doing something is less liable. So, because we can break this Kava Chomer, that's why we need the Pasuk, or Ben Yigach, or Yigach, to teach me that an ox is fully liable. Same same level of liability, both for death penalty and, if it's Mo'ad, regarding Kofed, whether it kills a child or an adult. All right, good. Ben Li'ela Mo'adin Betaminayin. All that was good for a short Mo'ad, because that's the Pasuk, the, the original Pasuk, was talking about the context of Shor Mu'ad. But how do you know that if my Shor Tam kills a child, that the the ox will get the death penalty? There's no kofir no matter what, even for an adult. But how about the death penalty? How do I know that? The Pasuk is not in that context. So here also, we're going to start with the Memasinu and then Erek HaVachomer. Din hu, ho'il v'chiyeh b'ish v'isha, v'chiyeh b'ben u'bat. Ma k'shechiyeh b'ish v'isha, lo chalak bo ben tam lemu'ad, Regarding an animal that kills a human being, since a Torah makes the one liable if his ox kills a man or woman adult, and it also makes one liable if it kills a, a, a child, a son or a daughter, right? We just proved that that's definitely true for a short Mu'ad. So now we're going to compare adults and children. Just like the Torah says one is liable when one's ox kills an adult. And it makes no distinction there whether it's Tam and Mu'ad. That's the simple Pshat of the Pesukim, right? So at first it gives the Pesukim about a uh, short Tam killing a person, in which gets Kila. And then talks about Mu'ad killing a person and gets Kila. And so all those for sure are at least talking about adults. So just like regarding when it kills an adult, the Torah says it's true for Tam and Mu'ad. So also, when, if an ox kills a child, it makes sense not to make any distinction between Tam and Mu'ad. So there's just a, an analogy from similar cases. Why, why would you make any distinction between them? And furthermore, a stronger proof, right? An adult has a diminished power regarding Nezek, uh, regarding Nezek because an adult has to pay if they uh, are if they do uh, do harm um, whereas a child does not have to pay when they cause harm so it, right the children are not liable for their actions so if you say regarding an adult where they have to pay in right when they do harm and yet when they if they are killed there's no distinction between Tam and Mu'ad then regarding a child who has an elevated status regarding the zikin, right? They are, they are more immune. They don't have to pay when they cause nezek, so all the more so they will get paid, right? If someone who, has to, who pays in gets paid out, someone who doesn't have to pay into the system certainly will take out uh, something from the system, right? And so if uh, children who don't pay in when they cause nezek all the more so, there will be no distinction between Tam and Mu'ad. We already know that uh, when a Mu'ad kills a child, one is liable. And so there's no reason to think that for a short Tam, it would be any different because, if anything, children are have a higher status than adults when it comes to the Nezik system. That's the Kava Chomer. But then we say in response, Amarta Bechidanin Kava Kal Mechamur Lachmir Alav, Imechamir Bemuad Echamur, Tachmir Betam Hakal. Wait a second, this Kava Chomer is problematic. Can we make a Kava Chomer um, uh, from a stringent case to learn the stringency to a lenient case? In other words, the typical structure of a Kava Chomer is I have a case that's usually stringent. And yet, I find that it's lenient regarding something, then all the more so the lenient case will certainly have that leniency. But here, um, I've found that we have a stringency in Mu'ad. Now, Mu'ad is always more stringent. So Mu'ad, it makes sense to have a stringency 
where the Shor Mu'ad will be liable, whether it's an adult or a child. But that fits with Mu'ad. You can't transfer over that stringency in the stringent case of Mu'ad over to the lenient case of Tam that's usually more lenient. So who, who says we should apply the stringency to the more lenient case, right? That's not how Kavah is work. And furthermore, right, because you did give a reason here, right, they pay in, uh, uh, children don't have to pay in, so there was a reason, but to counter that, I'll tell you otherwise, um, regarding a man or a woman, an adult, they are obligated in misvot, so that gives them a higher degree of importance, so they could say that's why uh, and uh, a, a, a shor, whether a tam or mu'ad, that kills an adult, one is liable because you killed someone who is li- who is obligated in a misvot. That's a higher status. Would you say the true is n- the same is true necessarily for a child who does not have to do misvot? Okay, even if it's a mu'ad, that's stringent. Fine, you have to pay for a mu'ad that kills a child. But maybe if a tam that kills kills a child, well, maybe the owner of the tam would be less liable because they didn't kill someone who's obligated for misvot. They killed a child who's not obligated in misvot. Um, so uh, that's why I need the pasuk. Tamod lomad or ben yigach or bat yigach negicha betam negicha b'muad negicha lemita negicha din zakin. In fact, I wouldn't be able to just learn it from a memasinu or a kavachomed. Rather, I need the pasuk to say right whether an animal gores a son or a daughter, and that apply that is true both for tam and shor muad, and it also applies not only if a, if the animal kills. Um, a child, but also if it causes injury to, to a child. So this pasuk is a catch-all to teach me everything that children and adults are, in fact, the same. Okay, so don't think that just because it's not obligated but has any less worth, right? Murder is still murder. All right, next Mishnah. Shon shehaya mit hakech bekotev v'nafal al ha'adam. Nitkaven l'arog et ha'behema v'arag et ha'adam. L'goy v'arag ben Yisrael. L'infalim v'arag ben Kayama patur. So a few different cases here. Case number one is an ox that's rubbing itself against a wall and it falls down on a person and kills the person. So it seems to be uh, uh, intending to uh, alleviate an itch it has on the back, on its back, um, and so it can't, the animal can't reach uh, its back with its um, you know, hands or tail. So it's rubbing against the wall to itch itself. And uh, lo and behold, as it's doing that, it's leaning on the wall, pushing against the wall, the wall falls down and kills someone. The ox did not intend to kill someone, but it did. Okay, that's case number one. Separate case altogether is an ox that's goring and it intends to gore another animal. By mistake, it ends up killing a person. Or it intends to kill a non-Jew and ends up killing a Jew. Or it intends to kill a nefel, a non-viable baby, a baby that's not going to live. They could have said a terefa also, a person that's not going to live out the year. Uh, and then end, it killed a healthy person. In all these cases, patur, because it did not kill the thing or person or animal that it intended to, um, for which it would not be liable. An animal is not liable if it kills another animal, a goy, or uh, a baby that will not be able to live. And so since with its intention, what if it, if it went through with its intention, it would not get the death penalty. And now by mistake, it killed a viable Jew, so the animal is not liable. So these cases all have in common that the animal did kill, um, but it, it did not intend to kill someone for whom it would be liable to the death penalty. All right, so that's clear in the Mishnah. Now the question is, um, even though the animal does not get sikila in these cases, that's the patur, but what about the kofir? Amash Shemuel patur mita vechaya bekofir, rav verav amar patur mize u mize. If it's a shor mu'ad, so, so Shemuel said, even though it doesn't get the death penalty, it's still, the owner still has to pay kofir. You see, Shemuel is following the opinion of Rabbi Yohanan. Uh, we saw it yesterday, but Rav says no. He's not. He's not. He's liable to neither one. Uh, Rav would be following Rabba. Rabba is much later than Rav, so you could say Rabba is following Rav. They agree with each other that in cases where the animal does not get sikila, 
The owner does not have to pay kofer. Okay, now we ask. Ve'amai, so challenge to Shemuel. Uh, why, are you t why are you telling me that he has to pay kofer? Ha, tamhu. Isn't this animal a short tam? Why Why do we think it's a short tam? Because, like, what are the chances that it's mu'ad for leaning on walls to scratch oneself and knocking them down and killing a person? Is that is that a thing? Can the short be mu'ad that it always does this? And the answer is yes, indeed. We can borrow an argument that Rav made. This is interesting because we're borrowing an argument that Rav made in order to defend Shemuel. But why not? I'm sure he would be happy to help his colleague. Rav, in a different context, said that an ox that falls on a person in a pit. The person fell into the pit, and then, or he's in the pit, and then an ox comes and falls on the person and kills him. So can you be Mu'ad for that? And Av says yes, right? They could have a case where uh, an animal did that, does this all the time, and it's always falling into pits and on people and becomes Mu'ad for that. So here too, we can say that this is in fact an animal. I don't know, it always has itches on its back, so it's always rubbing itself um, on walls and making them fall down on people and killing people. So yes, that's why you have to pay kofir because it's an animal that is mu'ad for killing people in this way. But now we ask, if it's really mu'ad, then the animal is liable to the death penalty. If it always does this, it always pushes down on walls and kills people, and it did this already three times, well then the animal should die also, right? Because that means it's doing it, and that, doesn't that mean that it's doing it on purpose? I understand in the Dav's case, Rav was able to find a case where it keeps falling into pits. Now, why is it doing that? Well, because it sees some vegetable uh, vegetable at the edge of the pit, and so it tries to get the vegetable, but it's all the way at the end, and then it slips and falls into the pit. So in those cases, it doesn't intend to uh, fall in. It doesn't intend to kill the person. Nevertheless, it does this action all the time. It doesn't uh, have good um, uh, sense of its aware awareness of its surroundings. Um, doesn't have good depth perception, and it thinks it can get the uh, carrot at the edge and keeps falling in. So, yes, you could be Mu'ad for killing people by mistake uh, in in the scenario regarding the pit. But here, where it's pushing up and rubbing it against walls and pushing them down and it keeps killing people, so then how are you going to explain that that this is also Mu'ad and yet it doesn't intend to kill people? Isn't it evident? If it keeps pushing down walls and killing people, that is doing it on purpose? And the answer is not necessarily. When it's pushing on, rubbing against the wall, it's not doing it because it wants to push down the wall and cause damage and push it on someone and kill them, but rather it's doing it for its own pleasure. It always has itches on its back. It's an itchy, uh, itchy back ox. And so it's always looking for... Um, walls and and that's a, a big heavy uh, strong ox and it keeps pushing down the walls and killing people it doesn't intend to kill the people but yes you could be Mu'ad for uh, killing uh, people by mistake, um, by uh, push, by rubbing his back against walls, and he does this all the time. So you can still be Mu'ad and still not get the death penalty because he never did it on purpose. And now he said, well, what's the test? See, if there's a carrot there, and we see that, oh, every time there's a carrot at the edge, he always tries to get it and then falls in. And then, so he could be Mu'ad for falling into pits by mistake when there are carrots at the edge. There we could see, because we could see what he's trying to do. But... If you just see an ox that's pushing up against the wall, how do you know whether its intention is to rub its back or if its intention is to push down the wall and kill someone? How can you going to interview it and ask it, you know, what, 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 why did you do that? And the answer is, we can tell. We can see after it falls down, does the ox continue rubbing its back against the fallen wall? If it does, then that means its intention was to get the itch out. And it didn't get it out totally and because it fell down. So it's still uh, rolling around on its back there and getting the itch out. Then it's clear that it did it for its own. Hana'a, uh, nevertheless, it is called Mu'ad for killing people by mistake. 
And that's why, although it doesn't get the death penalty, by the fourth time it does it, the owner will have to pay kofed. But if we see that um, once, it, the, the, once it pushes the uh, wall down and kills someone, then it, runs, it walks away. So that means it, it was doing it on purpose. And in that case, yes, you would give it the death penalty also. Um, now we ask, hold on, why should the, why should the animal be liable? In the case of pebbles, um, right? Remember when the animal's walking and, it, and pebbles fly out and cause damage? So this is all only caused uh, indirectly. And therefore, the animal should not be fully liable because it only caused this damage indirectly. It pushed the wall down and then the wall fell on a person. So um, we should not impose a, a, a kofed in such a case. And um, the answer is, We're talking about a case where the, uh, the, 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 the wall gave way gradually while the ox was pushing down on it, such that the ox's weight continues to be on the wall as it's going down. And so the ox, um, it's the ox's force and weight that directly kills a person, even though the ox is pushing the wall and the wall is pushing the person. It's not that it pushed the wall and then left and the wall is what does it. That would be serorot. But it's where the ox is giving constant p force to the wall and that's why it's not considered serorot. It's rather that the ox did, did this directly. All right, good. Now we're going to prove that Shemuel is, uh, is correct and challenge Tarav. Again, as Shemuel said, even, this, even if there's no um, uh, death to the ox, still you have to pay kofed. This would be a support for Shemuel. It'll also be a support for the Biochanan. Here is the Braita. Yes, Chaya be mita u be kofed. Vies Chaya be kofed u patu me mita. Vies Chaya be mita u patu me na kofed. Vies patu mize u mize. There are four different cases of all permutations. There are cases where one could be liable that the ox dies and the owner pays kofed. And sometimes the owner pays kofed, but the animal does not get the death penalty. And sometimes uh, one, the, the animal does die, but the owner does not have to pay kofed. And sometimes neither punishment is applicable. Hakesad, what are the cases? Muad be kavana, chaya be mita u be kofed. If an ox kills and it's a shor muad and it does it with intent to kill, then obviously it will get uh, the animal will die and the owner will pay kofed. Muad she lo be kavana, chaya be kofed u patur me mita. If it's a shor muad but it did not intend to kill, that's our case, the case of the wall, the case of the when it thinks it's killing an animal but kills a person, there the owner has to pay kofed even though the animal does not get um, the death penalty. This is it. This is Shemuel's law and uh, this is a challenge to Dav. Tam bechavana chaya bemita ufatu mi kofed. If it's a short tam that kills someone on purpose, although you kill the, the shor, there is no kofed payment for a tam. And tam shelo bechavana patu mize u mize. If a short tam kills, um, without intent, then neither uh, punishment applies. And that Braita adds that all that was regarding the death if it kills someone, but if it only causes injury to someone and it's not intentional, so that is a machloket. Rabbi Uda says the owner is liable for that, and Rabbi Shimon says the owner is not liable because the animal, although it did cause uh, damage, it did not intend to. My tama did Rabbi Yehuda. What's the reason for the Biuda to say that one is liable? Yalif bi kofro. Ma kofro shelo bechavana chayav. Avan ezakim tam shelo bechavana chayav. He's going to compare it to kofer that is paid for, uh, paid by a shor muad, um, uh, even if it's shelo bechavana. So just like kofer is paid, even if there's, even if it's not not intentional killing. So too, Nizikin should also be, even though it's not intentional, intentional one should have to pay. So he's going to compare right, the uh, payment of damages to Kofir. Rabbi Shimon says uh, that when he's not, the owner is not liable for damages that were caused unintentionally because he's going to compare it to the punishment of killing the ox. Just like the ox does not get killed when it kills someone without intention, so too, if the ox damages without intention, the owner should not have to pay for it.
Why don't you agree with Rabbi Shimon's proof and compare payment of damages to the death penalty of the ox? Rabbi Yehuda will say, I'm going to compare monetary payment to another monetary payment and not a monetary payment to the death penalty. Kofed is a monetary payment that is paid even when a ox kills um, unintentionally. So therefore, that payment is similar to a uh, payment for damages. Also, one should be liable, even though the ox did it unintentionally. Rabbi Shimon, why don't you agree with Rabbi Uda and learn Tashlumin from Kofir? And his answer is, Danin, He wants to compare one liability of the ox from another liability of the ox itself, as opposed to Kofir which is a liability of the owner. You see, Kofed is atonement for the owner. He would be liable to the death penalty. He can get out of it by paying Kofed. Okay, that's just about the owner's own guilt, whereas the death penalty uh, to the ox and payment of Tashlumin for the ox, although the ox himself isn't paying it, the owner is paying it, still that's because of the um, that the damage that the ox itself did. So what well, things that are directly uh, consequent upon the ox is guilt and damage, um, uh, for either death penalty or damages, those are more similar to each other. Uh, Kofed is atonement for the owner's guilt, which is separate from that of the ox. We continue with the next part of the Mishnah. If the animal intended to kill another animal or a non-Jew or an Ephel, but ends up killing a healthy Jew, then the um, uh, the ox does not get the death penalty because uh, it uh, did not kill the intended target. So now we infer, So that would mean, let's say it meant to kill one uh, healthy Jew, uh, but in, uh, Mr. Cohen, but by mistake it went and killed Mr. Levy, another healthy Jew. Um, so then that would be would be liable, right? In other words, is the point that it's not its intended target, so uh, but um, and that's why um, it's not liable, or because the intended target was someone or something for which it would not be liable. So all the cases in the all the examples in the Mishnah were that it intended to kill saw an animal or a person for whom it would not be liable. And then it kills someone else who it, for whom it is liable, so it's not liable because it didn't intend to kill someone within liability, but it's not because it, it got the wrong target. If the target it intended for was a full regular Jew, and then it actually killed another full regular Jew, then it would be Chayav. That seems to be a proper inference from the Mishnah. So evidently our Mishnah is not the opinion of Rabbi Shimon because Rabbi Shimon says if an ox intends to kill Mr. Cohen and ends up killing Mr. Levy, both of whom are healthy adult Jews, uh, it could be kids, right? Healthy Jews. Then um, he is not the axes. Ox is not liable because according to the Bishimon, right? He's more lenient, and he says kavana matters. Um, and uh, if it's the wrong kavana, one is patur. This is interesting because the Bishimon also in Chot Shabbat says davar shelomit kaven. Patur, if you didn't intend for this action, then one is not liable for Shabbat and also an ox. Even though the person who was going to kill, it would have been liable death penalty if it did that one, but it didn't end up killing that one. What's the Bishimon's source? The Pasuk says that the regarding a shor Mu'ad, the shor gets stoned, and also the owner deserves the death penalty. He could usually pay off it, but technically he deserves a death penalty. He can always pay Kofid, but right, Kofid is instead of his death. But see, the Pasuk is comparing the death of the owner to the death of the ox. So just like regarding owners, regarding human beings, a human being who kills someone will only be liable to the death penalty if he kills the intended target. All right? If I intend to kill Mr. Cohen and I miss, and by mistake, I kill Mr. Levy, 
Um, I am not liable, according to the Bishimon. Even though I intended to murder someone for whom I would be liable to death penalty if I killed them, but I didn't kill that person. So too, uh, the, same is, the, uh, the same law applies to ox, uh, only if it kills the person that it intended to kill. But if not, even if that person intended to kill, it would have been liable to li- li- death penalty for killing that person, but still, that was not its intended target. And therefore, just like a person, so to an animal, does not get the death penalty for missing its target. Okay, now the Bishimon, how do you know the law regarding humans that if someone kills an unintended target, even though one is trying to kill a person, one is not liable? The Pasuk describing a premeditated murder is that I lie in wait for him and rose and, and struck him. This meaning the same person that I was lying in wait for and, and aiming at has to be the same person that I actually kill. So only if I kill the intended target, then I get the death penalty. But even if I was aiming to shoot and kill Mr. Cohen and I missed and got Mr. Levy, I am not liable according to the Bishim on. Now the banan who disagree, they disagree both regarding humans and uh, animals, and they say if I intended to kill Mr. Cohen, and then I killed Mr. Levy instead, doesn't matter. I still am I am, I am liable death penalty because I was intending to commit mur- commit murder. And I did commit murder, so I am liable uh, no matter what. What is Rabbanan going to do with Ve'arab? What is that? What is that word for? This sounds like I'm planning to kill that person. So what do I need it for? Oh, Ve'arab lo means I am. I am intending to to murder a specific person. Then I am liable if I kill another person. But if I am not intending to kill a specific person, but rather I throw a stone into a crowd. And within the crowd is a mixed number of people, some of whom I would be liable to capital punishment if I kill them, like a Jew, or some of them I would not be liable to capital punishment if I kill them, like a non-Jew. Then, uh, yeah, we're not going to get into that, but that's true. I wouldn't get capital punishment for killing a non-Jew, according to Talmudic law. So I throw it into the into the crowd, and I didn't I didn't intend to kill anyone specifically. That's what the Adab law comes to exclude. I would not be liable death penalty in that case. Now we ask, what are the particulars of the case? By the way, um, in manuscripts, it's, uh, are different than the normal printed edition. If you look here, um, in the uh, regular printed edition, it says, and the Vilna edition, it says, uh, um, however, in the, in the earlier printed editions, um, at the first printed edition, Sunsino and Bamberg in Venice, and all manuscripts say Goyim. So that is, in fact, the original. You see this uh, Steinzaltz English edition, as in the Hebrew he Steinzaltz edition, uh, revert back to the original correct uh, um, uh, reading of Goyim. Uh, how, did Kana- how did the Canaanites get in there? There aren't any Canaanites around. There weren't any Canaanites around. Um, in the 1500s either, or, or, or in, uh, later when Vilna was printed in the 1800s, there were no Canaanites. So why they come in? This must be because of Christian censors. Um, Christians thought that whenever it says Goyim, it's referring to them. So they didn't like this, that uh, it's referring to killing of, uh, killing of Christians. So they changed it to Canaanites. And I said, no, we're not talking about killing Christians. We're talking about Canaanites. Okay, in fact, it's not talking about uh, specifically Christians or Canaanites or anyone. Uh, the point is anyone that isn't Jewish. Um, so anyway, the point is like this. If there are nine non-Jews and one Jew in the crowd and I throw a rock into them, uh, then, uh, yeah, I would not be liable, but that would be obvious because that I'm, I'm following the majority. So that's why I'm following the majority, the majority of people there. I would not be liable death penalty. So that's why I wouldn't be. Uh, or if you say it's five Jews and five non-Jews, also, when it comes to capital punishment, we're going to follow a leniency 
So we're going to bend towards leniency, and therefore I also would not get the death penalty no matter what. So I don't need the pasuk for this case. Rather, I only need the pasuk for a case where there are nine Jews and only one non-Jew in the crowd, and even though the majority is, in fact, Jewish, nevertheless, um, uh, uh, and there's only only one non-Jew there, nevertheless, this is a majority that's fixed in place. And the rule is, when something is fixed in place, then we consider it as if it's 50-50. Um, and here, the chidush is, yes, we're going to, uh, we're still going to apply safek nefashot lehakel because of the pasuk ve'adab law, that this is considered that uh, also premeditated planning, even though, yeah, there's one Jew there, and let's say I knew all that, that there's one, there's, um, there, there's one, so one non-Jew in there, and I knew all that, and so the, but the, the likelihood um, is that I would kill a Jew, so I might think that this is considered um, uh, killing A, uh, planning to kill A, and killing B instead, but both people that I would be liable to capital punishment for, I would think that since nine of them are Jewish, I might still apply the death penalty here. And that's why of Law, according to the Banan, comes to teach me, not so, as long as there is even a small possibility that the person that I was going to kill was not someone for whom I would be liable to capital punishment. So we can we say that that is considered not premeditated, and um, it's the same as if I intended to kill um, a, a non-Jew directly and ended up killing a Jew, um, in which case I would not be liable to the death penalty, not even according to Rabbanan. Next Mishnah, Shor ha'isha v'shor ha'yetomim v'shor ha'apotropos. Shor ha'midbar, shor ha'ikdesh, shor ha'ger shemet ve'en lo yorshin, hare elu chayavin mita. Rabbi Yehuda omer, shor ha'midbar, shor ha'ikdesh, shor ha'ger shemet, peturim min ha'mita, lefi she'en lahem be'alim. The Mishnah list uh, uh, oxen that are owned by all these different people, and in all, all cases, if they kill someone, the ox uh, get deserves the death penalty. If an ox is owned by a woman, or it's owned by orphans, or it's owned by orphans who have uh, a steward appointed over their uh, uh, their estate, or an, an ox that's ownerless, that's wandering in the desert, or that was given to uh, dedicated to Hekdesh, or an ox that belonged to a ged who has no relatives to inherit him, which is basically the same as one that's Hefker. Um, and uh, all these, if they kill, they are uh, kill a person, they are liable to the death penalty. It be Yehuda, however, disagrees regarding three of them. If it's a desert one or Hekdesh or that belonged to a convert that died without heirs, so another case of Hefker. All these, since they have no owner, so there, there's no, no one to be responsible for them, and therefore, um, obviously no one pays, but also the ox himself does not get sekila. Tenora banan, a braita that expands and gives the source for this. Shor, shor, shiva, lehavi, shor, haisha, shor, yitomim, shor, potropo, shor, midva, shor, ekdesh, shor, hager, shemet, ve'en lo, yorshin. If you look in the parasha in Sefer Shemot, that talks about the uh, of the laws of the oxen. It says the word short seven times. Why so many times? To include number one, that of a woman. Number two, that of orphans. Number three, that of orphans with a steward. Number four, that in the desert. Number five, Hevikdesh. Number six, that of a convert who dies without heirs. That's only six. What about the seventh one? Oh, you need one of the instances of the word shod to teach me the basic law of, or just a regular ox owned by just a, a regular person. Uh, however, the Biuda disagrees. Biuda Amir Shomim Basho Ekdesh Shod Hager Shemet Ve'En Lo Yorshim Petim Min Mital Lefi Shehe En Lahem Be'Alim. That just repeats the same wording as in the Mishnah. Now, Amar Avuna Poter Ayad Biuda Afilu Nagach Ul Basof Hikdish Nagach Ul Basof Hifkir. Ravuna adds an extra chidush when the Biuda says that these three types do not get the death penalty. That is not only if they had been given Hekdesh or they went to Hefked and then killed someone, even if it gored and killed someone, and after that the owner 
uh, made it Hekdesh or uh, renounced ownership over it. When so, therefore, still, when since at the time of trial it does not have an owner, it doesn't have an owner to bring it to court, and therefore it also does not get the death penalty, even though it killed someone while it was owned. Mimai, how does Ravuna know that this is true? According to the Biuda, Mitikatani Tarte, Shoramid Bar, Vishora Ger a Meshemet, Ben Lo Yoshin, Shora Geshman Yoshin, my Nihu, Dehevan, the Enlo Yoshin, Havale, Shorev Ker, Hainu Shoramid Bar, Hainu Shora Geshemet, Ben Lo Yoshin, because the Biuda mentioned two cases that are really the same. He mentioned um, an ox that's in the desert and an ox of a convert who died without heirs. Well, if he died without heirs, so then what is that? Isn't that, well, since it has no heirs, then that's Hefker. That's the same as the desert one. It's also Hefker. So these two are the same. Why Why repeat both? The doubling is to teach me that not only if it um, uh, uh, was given away and then gored, but even if it gored first and then he made it a dish, or then he made it ownerless, um, since during the time of the trial, it doesn't have an owner, it does not get killed. Tanya Namehachi, we have a Braita that supports this. Yater al ken Amar Rabbi Yehuda. Now, was Rav Huna was saying this as an interpretation of Rabbi Yehuda, but the Braita that explicitly says so. Afilu nagach ul basofik dish, nagach basofikir patur. Even if it gores first and then the owner uh, made it hektesh, or then the owner made it ownerless. One does not kill the ox. Since it says a warning was given to him. Now that's, this actually is talking about it becoming Mu'ad in the first place. It gored three times and then the warning was given to the owner. Uh, so even though it's actually referring to before the goring, nevertheless, Vu'ad is talking is talking about witnesses. So it's putting us into a uh, courtroom context. And so that is connected to um, Vehemit, and it killed someone, and then the punishment that shall be stoned. So this teaches us that the killing, uh, the, 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 uh, the crime, when it killed the victim, and standing on trial have to be the same meaning under, one, under, under, un, under the same ownership. It could be different ownerships. You could, if you sell it, it's still it's still the death penalty. But it has to be owned during both of during both the killing, that the the killing of the victim, and when it comes to uh, stands trial. And since but it was given away before a stands trial, it doesn't get the death penalty. Now we ask Ugmaradin la Wait a second. What if it's um uh it, at the beginning of the trial it is owned. Um, while they're deliberating, but then um, before the verdict it's given away. Um, so that then would still be killed. Part of that same pasuk is, and the, uh, and the ox will be stoned. Um, and that's, uh, that's after the verdict. So doesn't that mean that the verdict also, at the time of the verdict, it also has to be owned? Uh, yes, you're right. Ela Emma, so we'll just fix that language. We only stone the ox if it was owned by uh, someone uh, at the time of the kill at the, that the ox killed the person and when it was standing trial and also when the verdict is handed down, only then will it get the death penalty. But if the owner uh, gives it away or makes it hekdesh um, at any uh, makes it ownerless or makes it hekdesh at any time in between, then the ox does not get killed. Baruch Adonai Amen ve'amen.